Hey everybody, a number of you have asked me what I thought about the A's chances of staying here versus leaving somewhere and I was reluctant to give you the answer because I said it was more fun and it is more fun and more appropriate to discuss the details regarding the situation in Oakland and what needs to be done at each step of the way to keep the A's here in Oakland versus what is being done and at points incorrectly to achieve the same objective. But I do think it's fair to give you an assessment of the total landscape of possibilities for the Oakland Athletics regarding relocation. And as you can tell by the title, I've come to a determination. The Oakland Athletics have no place to go. Let me put it this way from the vernacular that was introduced by then National Football League head of business affairs, Eric Grubman. There's no viable stadium option. I repeat, there is no viable stadium option. Let's take the options, let's take the cities. For example, Las Vegas has been pointed to by a number of media outlets as the favorite. I don't really know where that came from, but the fact of the matter is the idea of putting a stadium at what is expected to be the former site of the Rio uh, is a fantasy because there are no concrete plans to tear down that hotel right now. It's in operation. And given the fact that we're just hopefully coming out of this economic uh, downturn caused by the pandemic, why not keep it running and see to what degree it can be put back into the black as opposed to selling it for part of what it would actually be worth and hoping to get financing to build something else there. That right now, unless you have somebody who's just jonesing and has the money to make that happen, doesn't seem like a real possible future expectation at this point in time. And when that will change, it's not clear. Because of this other fact, there are two additional problems. And let's use the Raiders and their move from Oakland to Las Vegas as a benchmark. What Las Vegas had going for it was a multi-year effort called the Southern Nevada Tourism and Infrastructure Committee established by then Governor Sandoval with Stephen Hill as his economic development representative. And that Southern Nevada Infra Tourism Infrastructure Committee led to the writing of the Southern Nevada Tourism and Infrastructure Act, which called for a number of actions, including, to make a long and complicated story straight, the construction of the Las Vegas Clark County Large Scale Event Center, which you now know as Allegiant Stadium. There was no plan in the final outcome to pave the way for, let alone finance, a baseball only facility. It was, there was talk of it, certainly, and it appeared in different mock ups and drawings early on when the discussion started in 2015. But by the time the Raiders surfaced in late 2000, well, really early 2016, all that talk faded away. And the focus was very tightly on the Raiders from a standpoint of sports facilities. That also came because you had one man who was driven to bring professional football to the Southern Valley. And that man was Sheldon Adels. He has passed away very sadly, and his Las Vegas Sands Corporation is a mere shadow of its former self in Las Vegas. They have no plans to make the kind of outlays, expenditures, and lobbyist buying it did to wrangle a vote for a $750 million subsidy for, elite, for what we now call Legion Stadium and what I still call the Las Vegas Clark County Large Scale Event Center an event center that is not designed to handle baseball. There's no champion for baseball that you can immediately identify who has the bucks to pull it off. 
which leads to the other point. If the fishers truly want to move the A's, the other question is, will they want to sell? Because why would they simply start all over again in, well, geographically unfamiliar territory when they would have, you know, a better chance of selling it, making the money from holding it for so long and going on to other aspects of life? Why not that? There are, in this world, other people who would want to own a Major League Baseball team, even under these circumstances. Why not the athletics in Las Vegas? But even then, no billionaire is stupid enough to spend his or her money on a stadium. Now, lest you scream Stan Kroenke, I remind you that Kroenke owns not one but I believe six sports franchises, and also with that has managed to receive a number of forms of public assistance from Inglewood and the state of, and the county of Los Angeles on the way to constructing his palace down there that's called SoFi Stadium. No one uses their own money. It's always a flow through from operations for one from one facility and another that helped pay for the facility that's being built. The private bonds are based on those revenue flows. The backing is based on what, in this case, Mr. Kroenke totally owns. Here's a very unusual example of a person who quite literally take sports revenue from one organization he owns over in the European Union and use it if he chooses to do so for his Rams in the United States. There isn't anyone right now that's focused on Major League Baseball in Oakland who has that capability. And then let's continue on less Las Vegas. Let's say that you're talking about the legislature and you believe that somehow the Nevada legislature be willing to make that same deal. Well, who's going to convince the Democratic-led legislature to do that? At this point in time, in the middle of a pandemic, when there are so many services to be paid for, when Nevada has turned blue, riddle me that, because if you insist on that idea, I would ask you, are you at all aware of the political situation today, let alone the one in Nevada and Clark County in Las Vegas? Okay. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying comparing the Raiders situation in Las Vegas and Oakland and the A's situation in Las Vegas and Oakland, the Raiders score at a 10 because they got it done. The A's score right now is at about a 1.5. We have that much more to go. So let's consider Portland. Portland is dying for an expansion baseball team. They're not turning away the athletics, and they always believe that they were a candidate for the athletics wanted to move. But what does that entail for their potential investors? And have they received total entitlement to build a stadium on the grounds in Portland? Do they have the total amount of money to do that? And would the investors, including Russell Wilson and his wife, be willing to essentially move aside for the athletics and John Fisher? Or are they capable of buying out John Fisher? That's not clear. So again, we have a stadium concept, but we don't have clear financing lined up. And then there's Nashville. Nashville just unveiled a possible look for its stadium a year ago in June. And the people that are pointed to as potential investors are said to only have $1.1 million in the bank to contribute to the situation at that point in time. I seriously doubt the situation has changed in a year during the pandemic. So... And not only that, we also don't know to what extent those same people were impacted 
by the unfortunate events of the horror of that explosion in downtown Nashville last year. So, when you look at the most likely candidates for relocation, when you consider them, right now it doesn't look good. The only option is Howard Terminal. The Coliseum, the A's don't want to be there for obvious reasons. Because in roughly a generation, they will have a gigantic flood problem that neither the city, the county, nor the state at this point in time has done anything about. Nothing. And as I've said before, I'll say it again, it's time to stop fooling ourselves about the sea level water rise problem in East Oakland and West Oakland. A problem that plagues Howard Terminal much less and therefore is more easy to mitigate using tax increment financing funds based on the past the past legislation called SB 293 Skinner than would be at the Coliseum. The Coliseum is a non-starter for the athletics. But if they can't get a deal done at Howard Terminal, where would they go? Where can they go? The only option is that John Fisher would simply have to sell the team or simply ride it out the Coliseum until the political climate was different. And then again, there's that other question. How long are you willing to remain there given what would be the fact that the city, the county, and the state have no intention of fixing a gigantic infrastructure problem, which is would doom the A's being down at the Coliseum eventually anyway. At some point, he would have to sell the team. So there you are. Subscribe to Zenny62 and bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com.